Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Team Growth and Geek weekly status meeting. Today is Tuesday, May the 9th. The phase we've been working on is transaction execution, and that involves executing all the transactions on the blockchain against our new EVM. And I'm delighted to report that we are closing that milestone as being successful. We have locked the branch, and we'll be merging it to master shortly. Uh, so that involved, as a, as a matter of test, um, all of our unit tests and our integration tests, but also executing every transaction that exists in the blockchain so far. So that's 0 to 2.4 million, and then 2.4 million up to the present, um, and still going. Now, there's a small gap which we have to backfill in of about point uh, about a hundred thousand, um, which are proving uh, difficult. Ukesh, what what's happening there? Uh, so I am currently thinking, and I am at block uh, two million four hundred fifty thousand. So I think we've got around fifty more thousand blocks to go. Uh, then we should be complete with all the transactions in the network. Okay, and um, I mean, there's a reason that those uh, transactions are uh, still lagging behind, right? Uh, yes, there is. Uh, it's mainly because of the attack that took place on the Ethereum and Ethereum Classic. Uh, the attacker was able to create uh, a whole lot of accounts that were cheap for him to create. Uh, and because of that, he was able to spam the network. Okay. Okay. So we'll be, we'll be slowly getting through that and just making sure there are no surprises there just to be uh, completely completely uh, sure we've ex executed every single transaction there's ever been so far. Um, so as part of the demo, uh, we were going to... Uh, we had our, our document... Um, which was the, uh, the, the demonstration of, um, of what it was we were going to do. Um, so I have that here, I'll just actually bring it up. Okay, so hopefully uh, people can see that. Uh, so this was just to say, uh, just to state what we intended to, to show as part of the transaction execution demo. Um, and it was really all about a, a, root hash, a root hash comparison and a transaction um, execution. So uh, Radic, I think you have, um, you have a little bit of demonstrating to do. Um, yes, uh, for today I'd like, I uh, wanted to show you a simple demonstration of uh, um, sending a transaction to the network and, and showing that uh, our client is able to process it and also give you a little summary of, uh, of the process uh, that, we, that we did. Uh, running all the transactions from the genesis and how, how the debugging uh, looked. Um, so let me start by sharing my screen. And uh, if everything's working correctly, on the right you should see uh, the logs of a live running EDC client. It is running on an EC2 instance that we share. Um, and as you can see, for example, it's uh, it's currently at block uh, three hundred six nine three nine one five. And if I go to the gas tracker IO web page that uh, lets us track the um, of the ETC network, you can see it's uh, it's roughly the same. Usually our client is a bit uh, ahead of the website. It's 18 now in the client, 17 
in the website. Um, so yeah, uh, so now, uh, now that I've shown that we're up to date, uh, I can actually try to uh, create a transaction. Um, so for that, I, I will be using an, an online wallet, uh, classic etherwallet.com. And uh, just to warn you, what, what I'm about to do is a bit insecure. Uh, please don't do that when you're sharing your screen publicly, but I'm going to paste um, a private key of an account I set up. Uh, so this is just, just a test account that will be used solely for, for this demo. Okay, I'm gonna unlock the wallet. And as you can see, I have already some uh, some ether here. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna send it to to another account. This is the same private key, okay? And I'm going to send it to my other account that I'm not going to share the private key of. And I'm going to uh, transfer total available balance. That means all balance reduced by the necessary fee. And that's the, that's the generated transaction. And I'm just going to send it. Yes, I'm sure. And here I got a confirmation that uh, I can't, that the transaction was submitted. It's, it's, this is the hash. Now I should be able to see it here. I think that requires, yes, uh, this is in progress. And let's see if, uh, if I can find it in the logs of, of our Okay. Um, I don't see it. Google is blocking my window a little bit. Um, okay, no, not, not found yet. Let's try again. Um, okay, there it is. Uh, I can see that a receipt has been generated for this transaction. It has used 21,000 gas, which is the standard gas price for a simple value transfer. And if we look for the block number, it has been part of this block. 360, let me, let me just quickly confirm that. Um, yeah, there's quite a lot of those here. Uh, this is um, this one. This is the transaction. Uh, it says it's unconfirmed yet, but this is this is my account, and it now has. Uh, the the eater that I sent, uh, yeah. As you can see, it's it has only four confirmations now, but give it a couple of minutes and and it will be fully confirmed. Um, okay. So yeah, so that's that's pretty much the demonstration. Um, okay. Maybe. Thanks, Radek. Um, so just for i mean for everybody else and to recap we've um that's the scala client is running as an ordinary node connected to the ethereum classic network we're creating transactions broadcast them to the network and we can see them being executed correctly against our evm yeah so unless there are any questions regarding that uh, I'd like to jump uh, onto the the summary of, of this phase, which is actually something we kept as a 
as a document. As we went along, uh, executing all the transactions from, from the genesis, we uh, made a little log of all the bugs that we noticed of the blocks that failed execution on, on a client. Um, and well, it's, it has been a f really fun process, I have to say, uh, discovering uh, those bugs. Sometimes there were really silly omissions like uh, logs were not being discarded in the event of er an error or one of the opcodes was wrong, had, had the wrong byte number. Um, if you have a, you, well, you can generally see that uh, the word call appears often here. And in fact, yes, this was uh, one of the most uh, generally calling call the contracts from within another contract uh, had proven to have a really lot of caveats and uh, intricacies. So, yeah. Yeah, so it's an interesting log. I think it's, uh, I mean, one of the fun parts was were not so much our fault, I would say. Uh, like, for example, here we discovered uh, Really, in a in a yellow paper, but this, this was quite an important one. It uh, affected uh, the gas refund calculations. Uh, as you can see, it was uh, it was accepted here, and and the person who who took that uh, was a bit surprised himself that all the implementations uh, do not follow the yellow paper exactly. It was deemed as a, uh, a as a bug in the paper in the end. Also, um, another interesting example was uh, well, the, the VM operates on two hundred fifty six bit numbers, but for certain operations, uh, it really doesn't make sense to deal with such big numbers like accessing parts of. Uh, Byte arrays like uh, like code or, or the input data to the transaction. These are only ever relatively small areas of uh, small byte arrays. So the yellow paper notices that that uh, this conversion of two ints have to be dealt somehow, but it doesn't. Uh, it didn't wasn't uh, uh, precise in, in in how to do that so so yeah we had we had a bug there and we had to copy um, I believe we copied get uh, solution um, so yeah but uh, even though we had all those bugs uh, solved and and we're at the top of the chain right now this still doesn't give us full confidence that that we're 100 percent correct um, but then again one would have to define exactly what correctness is um, so yeah but that that is definitely a, a subject for for another meeting however i just wanted to like for example point out this is a this is a task i made many weeks ago about a certain um, ambiguity in the definition of, of the call code instruction and uh, this uh, this 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 uh, corner case apparently has never happened on the blockchain so we still don't know whether we we're dealing with it correctly or not yeah uh, dealing uh, assuring that correctness will have to be uh, part of the next phase So that's the summary. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Radek. Anyone got any questions for Radek? Yeah, I think. Um, I mean, on the the correctness issue, it's uh, it's something I suppose that's being talked about uh, quite a bit, and there's some work being done um, by a chap whose name I forget uh, using using um, 
uh, is it cock? I think it's cock that they're using. Uh, so there, there is efforts underway to uh, to do some formal specifications of of the EVM. Um, but I don't think there's anybody. I mean, I don't think it's happening for any other client. I mean, we have seen evidence of where the clients have diverged in the past uh, because of a, a misinterpretation of uh, of some of the rules, and then very quickly uh, came back together. Um, so yeah, the the, the, the formal correctness is uh, is a difficult and um, uh, big area, I suppose you'd call it. Um, okay, but I think we're. I mean, we are pretty happy uh, that the uh, with with how the EVM has turned out in terms of we've managed to functionally get through what we said we'd get through, which is which is the entire chain of existing. Uh, transactions, and that's that's a, 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 a reasonable milestone to have attained. Um, and also, we'll be continuously testing going forward because we're going to keep that client running on our EC2 instance um, and make sure that it doesn't that it continues to execute all transactions that come into the network. Mm -hmm. So we'll have a. Mm -hmm. It's not so much an early warning system, but we certainly have a warning system. Should things go wrong, we'll know straight away. Um. So that's TX execution. The next phase that we're going that we're looking at is web the web query and command API. So this is uh, supporting all the the JSON interfaces um, and trying to make the thing make the the client that we have uh, useful to the outside world. So uh, Ukash, you've had a look at uh, the JSON APIs. Have you? Can you tell us how you're getting on with those? Yeah, sure. Uh, so today we have merged our first request regarding this milestone. Uh, we've got uh, a base for writing through APC APIs. Uh, we've already implemented some of the methods. Uh, we decided to first tackle the, the easier ones. And to, once we got them, uh, to move on to the more complex ones like uh, the ones that have to manage state, the, the filter uh, RPC methods. And I think we've also started working on uh, integration with ETH miner, uh, and that's something that Adam was working on. Uh, so yeah, we have a base for uh, JSON RPC, and we are working on implementing uh, the methods. Okay, and roughly, how I mean, how big are those APIs? Are there? Are we talking about hundreds of calls or or scores, or are they well documented? I think it's exactly around sixty or seventy APIs. Okay, cool. And Adam, you're looking at uh, you're looking at integrating a a miner, which uh, also involves some of that um, some of that RPC. Yes, uh, so uh, I'm working on integration with ETH miner and uh, it's looking good because we are able to provide uh, some static data to the miner taken from the actual network and then receive proof of work generated by the miner. So what is left on our side is to implement uh, the construction of new block for mining and then uh, inclusion of that minor proof of work. And when it is done, then we, we actually have a high performance miner that we can use with our client to be just uh, another node in the network. OK, great. Um, anyone have any questions for Adam or Wukash on that? All good. Okay, so uh, the only other thing to mention is uh, the only other little piece of work that's going to be that's going to be started pretty soon is just around some of the modularization of the code base. So the first one we're going to tackle will be the network layer, which will just involve um, just just basically loose try to to uh, control the coupling of that with the rest of the system and provide a module that's. Uh, that can be configured with maybe a handshake validator 
um, so that so that we can we can reuse that, and then we'll move up through the stack and try and do the same for maybe the consensus and the ledgers, uh, so that we have a really uh, modular code base that we can mix mix and match according to according to what we need. So hopefully that will um, facilitate experiments going forward um, with 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 uh, with with various uh, bits of functionality that we want to try out. So that's going to be starting. Um, Fairly soon as well. Um, okay, I think. Uh, does anyone have any questions on any of that? Okay, um, for for those of you who are in uh, still in Poland, just to remind you that uh, we're all on Argentinian time at the moment. I'm, I'm actually speaking to you from Buenos Aires here with. Uh, with Alan and Nico, and so far I can tell you it's been been uh, uh, very pleasant. Although I, I may pass out at any point due to jet lag, uh, but so far it's been going really well. Um, okay, if there's no more questions, guys, I think that's that's about it. Uh, thanks very much for listening, and talk to you soon.